Welcome to Artist Math. This is Professor Parker, and today I'm sporting the Thomas Sankara t-shirt. If you're unfamiliar with Thomas Sankara, go do a quick Google search of Thomas Sankara. After that, go to some online resource and look up some of his work, look up some of the books that he wrote, and grab some of those books and learn some more about Thomas Sankara, brother from Burkina Faso in West Africa, a great revolutionary that our children need to know about. Moving right along. This morning, I'm doing a couple of geometry problems. Well, I'm doing a couple of measurement problems for my nephew Nasir down in Maryland. And we're gonna find the volume of cylinders. All right, and I'm gonna try to break this down, make it as simple as possible, because these are very straightforward, very fundamental problems. But these are skills that we should master. We should know how to be given a shape. And then when we're asked to find the area, the perimeter, the circumference, the volume, anything of that nature, any type of measurement involving a shape, we should be able to find a formula or locate the formula and know which formula to use, write the formula down on our paper, and then know what the letters are supposed to be replaced with. So know where to put the numbers in place of the letters within the formula and then come up with the answer. But again, as with all things with mathematics, it requires practice. It requires practice, all right? So we're going to do two examples like we have up here. The first one, find the volume. As we can see, this is a cylinder. This is a cylinder, like a pipe, a soda can. A lot of things are cylindrical in shape, and this is a cylinder. So we need to find the volume. So what you first need to ask yourself is, what is the, vol what is the formula for the volume of a cylinder? All right, now the volume is the space inside, all right? What, what, is that what is that total amount of space inside? Now, the formula for the volume of a cylinder is this. And you should always write your formula down. Pi times r squared times the height. And the pi r squared should look familiar because pi r squared is the formula for the area of a circle. And if you think about a cylinder conceptually, all a cylinder is, is a bunch of circles stacked on top of each other. That's all a cylinder is, a bunch of flat, real thin circles stacked on top of each other. So that's why in the, the length or how many are stacked, or the length of all those stacks, or length of that complete stack, is represented by H, which is the height. So basically, if I know what this value is, and that's pi, and I know what this value is, that's the radius, and I know what this value is, that's the height, I can figure out the volume. So this is cake, as long as you have the formula. Now, another thing I wanna say about using formulas in mathematics. Formulas are nothing but a set of rules. That's all they are. It's a set of rules. It's a set of directions. That's all it is. Just like if your mother or your father gives you directions or give you, gives you rules or tell you what you should do or what you should not do, if you know how to listen to your mother and father when they give you directions and give you instructions, then you shouldn't have any problem following formulas. Now, if you don't know how to listen to your mother or father when they give you instructions or directions, then you probably will have problems using formulas because you're just not used to listening at the appropriate time. So that's a bigger issue that has that's not that only have nothing to do with your mathematical ability. But if you can listen to your parents or listen to a person that you respect or an elder when they give you information or give you instructions, then you should be able to use a formula in mathematics because it is a set of instructions. It tells you what to do. This formula tells me that I should take the value of pi, which is, we use 3.14 for pi, right? And then it tells me I need to multiply that by the value of r, which is the radius. And then, and I need to square, but actually not multiply by the radius, I need to square the radius first, right? And then multiply by that. And then multiply by whatever the height of the cylinder is. All it is is a set of instructions. That's all it is. Just like if you buy some furniture from somewhere and you got to put it together, you look at the instructions. What's step one? What's step two? What's step three? That's all it is. It really ain't that deep. All the formula is a set of instructions. So what we're going to do is follow these instructions and find out what V is or the volume. So my first step is I'm going to replace all these letters, like this Greek letter pi and this letter R and this letter H with the numbers that they represent. So... Let me throw that down. So V is equal to, and again, pi is 3.14. Pi is just a number, right? 
That's all Pi is. Pi is the number. We use 3.14. Sometimes you'll have problems where the instructions in the, at the top of the page will not require that you convert Pi to a number, 3.14. If that happens, you just leave it as Pi. And then your answer will have the Greek letter Pi within it. So then you go to R, right? R stands for radius. What is the radius? The radius is the length from the center of the circle, the circular part of the, of the cylinder, to the edge of the circle. That's what the radius is. And here it's labeled as six inches, six inches. So from the center of the cylinder to the edge is six inches. So therefore I'm gonna replace the R with a six and I'm multiplying, so I'm gonna put parentheses. Do not forget about that exponent two though, because that's also important. Because again, that's part of your instructions. If it's part of the formula, it's part of your instructions. You can't leave out part of the instructions. All right? It's like when you're cooking something. If you leave out one of the steps, whatever you're cooking is going to come out messed up because you left out one of the steps. All right? Now, then we have H. H stands for the height. Here we have the height labeled as 11 inches. So let me just go over here and replace that with an 11. All right? And then we just do our calculations. So I know, and also we follow order of operations whenever we are confronted with an expression like this. We use order of operations. So the first thing I'm going to do is deal with this exponent. So I got 3.14. And then I have 6 squared. 6 squared is not 12. That's a very common mistake. People sometimes look at their exponent and they just, they're moving so fast and they just do 6 times 2. Slow down. Slow down. 6 squared means 6 times 6 because there should be two 6s. Right? 6 times 6 because there's two of them. 6 times 6, which is 36, not 12. Just be on the lookout. Be careful. Don't make that mistake. All right? Because a lot of people make that mistake. And then you multiply that by 11. So now your answer is going to be found by multiplying 3.14 times 36 times 11. Now I already did this calculation on my paper, so I'm going to just write it down. So when I calculated this, I multiplied 3.14 times 36 times 11. I got 1,234 point... No, 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 that's not what I got. I got 1,243... Point four four, and what are my units? Inches to what exponent? Three, because that's another rule about volume. Volume is to the third power, it's 3D, right? Because volume is about the space inside, right? It's not about the surface area, it's not about the surface, and it's not about the edges, all right? It's about this, the amount of space inside. So that's volume, so that's to the third power because that's three dimensional, right? So here we have our answer. The volume of this cylinder is 1,243.44 cubic inches. That's how we say that. We say cubic inches or inches cubed. Eh, just say cubic inches. That's better. Say cubic inches. All right, so this is the answer to our first example. Now, our second example over here, we don't have a picture, but we have the information that we need. Number two, find the volume of the cylinder with a W. That W is bothering me. So this should say, I should have wrote with. With radius 13 yards and height 8 yards. Right? Now, I'm trying to find the volume. I'm trying to, it's a cylinder. I know the radius. I know the height. I'm not missing no other information. I got everything I need in order to find the volume. Because I know the formula. I know the instructions. I know the directions. All you have to do is just write down the formula. V equals pi r squared times height. And then you just plug in or substitute in for the Greek letter pi, the letter r, and the letter h. So pi, as always, is 3.14. So I replace that with 3.14. I use parentheses to show multiplication. The r stands for the radius. The radius, I know, is 13 yards. So I got 13. And I can just add the units on at the end. I don't need to write 13. I don't need to write yards right now. I can just add the yards in at the end of the problem. Just like I did over here in number one. Right? So then the height is 8. Right? So here we go. We got 3.14 times 13 times 8. Now we just do multiplication. Alright? So 3.14 times 13. Oh! Who peeped the mistake though? Did I follow the formula? The formula says V equals pi R squared times the height. 
This says pi times r times height. Where's my exponent at? Where's my exponent? I was about to ruin the whole thing. You need the exponent. You need the exponent. That's why it's also important for you to constantly check over your work as you go through these problems. So now, I got 3.14 times 169 times 8. And also, it's important, I believe, for all of our children, all of our students to memorize the perfect squares of the factors from at least 1 through 25. Memorize the perfect squares. So, like, what I mean is know that 1 times 1 is 1. Know that 2 times 2 is 4. Know that 3 times 3 is 9. Know that 4 times 4 is 16. Know that 8 times 8 is 64. Know that 12 times 12 is 144. Know that 20 times 20 is 400. Know that 25 times 25 is 625. Know that 24 times 24 is 576. You get my, you get my drift? All right? Have those memorized because you don't always want to have to pull out the calculator. If you have it memorized, then you don't have to pull out a calculator. You can save time and you can be more efficient. Okay? Now, Plus, there are going to be a lot of problems you'll be confronted with from standardized tests where calculators are not even allowed. So having some of those mathematical facts memorized will just help you because you won't be able to pull out a calculator anyway. You don't want to be sitting there stuck. And you don't want to be sitting there doing, uh, following the multiplication algorithm, doing vertical multiplication when you have a limited time to complete a test. So you want to do yourself a favor and start to memorize some of these basic facts from mathematics. All right. Now, so now we're just doing straight multiplication. 3.14 times 169 times 8. That's what we're going to do next. All right, now I already calculated this. So when I calculated this, I got 4,245.28 yards to the third power, or cubic yards. So that's the cylinder of, that's the volume, I mean, of this cylinder. And that's that. So again, as a recap, identify your shape. Know the formula. Use the formula. Plug the numbers in, in the place of the letters. Follow the order of operations. When we multiply, we have exponents, whatever, right? Just follow the rules. That's all using the formula is, follow the rules. If you know how to follow rules, and of course you shouldn't always follow the rules, right? Because some rules are meant to harm you and oppress you, right? That's another conversation. But if we know how to follow rules at the appropriate time, then we know how to complete math problems where we have to use formulas. All right? So that's it for today. I also want to give a shout out to my, my youngest child, Kwame. Kwame just turned one today. Shout out to him. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So thanks for tuning in. If you have, you or any people you know have math problems that they would like to see worked out on this Instagram Live, please tell them to take a picture of their problem and send it to the DM for all, all this math on Instagram. And that problem that they send in might make it up to this board. Thanks for tuning in. This is Professor Parker. Peace.